On a delta in the river's mouth We were born again out of the south Songs of the few from an ancient herd Are buried in the mud and blood and dirt Beauty for birds against the wind Watching silver wings within Singing a tale of where they grew Beautiful birds against the wind Let his tilted heart turn in the wind Holding out till it could not pretend Gotta dig a hole for our tomatoes The enemies of the room have passed away Never <laughs> should bloom and begs to stand Beautiful birds against the wind Watching a silver wind Are you doing it together? Singing a tale of where Beautiful birds against the wind Beautiful birds against the wind Hey friends! It's Julie. I'm back in all my bald glory. <laughs> well, this is where I, what I look like right now. This is the stage in my cancer journey where I am completely bald. Well, not completely. I have a little, little bit of fuzz coming back in, but overall, yeah, I've lost my hair. I've come to grips with it now that it's slowly starting to come, come back in. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to come and do an update and kind of tell you guys what's been going on and just say thank you to everyone for all the support. Everyone's been reaching out and sending messages and it's just been, it's been honestly, it's been a really hard few months, um, but it's getting better now. So just a quick update. I finished um, all of my chemotherapy on June 5th. So I'm so thankful for that. There were just lots of side effects and it was it was a really tough time i have to say i was not really prepared for how and you can't ever be prepared you don't really know what it's going to do to you obviously you can't be ready for that kind of thing unless you've been through it but it was definitely um, a pretty tough experience for me um, emotionally and physically you know the hair loss was just one one part of it but there was just a lot of side effects i have neuropathy in my fingers and in my toes uh, and like in the ball of my foot. That's kind of been lingering on. Um, I've lost a few of my toenails have fallen off um, from the chemo, uh, which is, you know, another weird, odd thing. You know, obviously you lose all your body hair too. So, you know, arms, legs, my nose, my eyebrows. Um, I have my eyebrows tattooed. There are still a few hairs left there, but basically the reason you see eyebrow is because those have been tattooed on so I still had some form of you know shape to my face um it's it's been it's just been a lot of roller coasters and in all honesty when I started losing my hair a couple weeks into chemo it just devastated me so much that I had a hard time picking up the camera um, I'm gonna try not to tear up because it still makes me upset thinking about it, but Let me take a breath So yeah, I think that was 
that's part of the reason why I haven't documented a lot of this journey like I thought that I would was because I just had a really hard time facing myself and in turn facing you guys and just the camera in general. It's not something that I wanted to pick up because I didn't want to show this part in the way that I felt. But I'm, I'm not, I'm sitting here crying. I, I feel so much better now and I'm so relieved that chemo is over. I've been able to start exercising again because the whole time that I was on chemo, I was just not able to exercise. I really wasn't able to stick with my keto diet like I had had planned and like I had been working with my nutritionist on. And that was a little disappointing for me because I really tried hard, but my appetite changed so much that it just wasn't, just wasn't in the cards. It wasn't something that I could do. And so even currently now I'm not doing keto. I'm, I'm trying to eat as healthy as possible, but I am incorporating, you know, carbs and things um, into my diet again, instead of, um, you know, strictly no, no carb um, or super low carb. But, but it's going, it's going well. I am preparing for surgery. That is coming up. Um, I have about three weeks until I have surgery. Um, that's going to be July 25th. I'm trying to just not be super anxious about it right now. When I think about it, it does make me anxious. And so I, I've just been trying to enjoy my last few weeks, um, before I have to have surgery. Um, get readjusted here. The surgery plan um, is going to be a double mastectomy with an aesthetic flat closure, which basically just means that I will currently not be doing any steps towards reconstruction. It doesn't mean that I won't later have reconstruction, but right now there will be no steps towards reconstruction uh, because I have to go through the radiation process first. And they said they don't want to, to do anything until that is over. So what they will be doing, like I said, double mastectomy, everything will be removed. There will be no skin sparing, no nipple sparing procedure, everything will go. And I will just be completely flat with kind of a, you know, a scar, a semicircle scar where they, you know, do the incisions uh, for, for that. And then I will have to wait at least six months before I can have, you know, any reconstructive surgery. Um, and that is because of the radiation that's going to come after surgery. So about four or five weeks when my surgery is over, I will go uh, start radiation, which will be 30 rounds. Uh, that'll take six weeks because you go every single day, uh, Monday through Friday, and, and have the, you know, radiation done. And because I'm having so much radiation and because of the area that they're doing, it's a pretty large area they want to get. So they want to get my lymph nodes up here and my collarbone. So they're going to start here and they kind of have an area. It's like a big rectangular area. They'll go into my armpit here because of the lymph nodes there. So it'll be kind of a rectangle kind of square area. And then that area will be targeted for my radiation. So 25 of the treatments will be in that area and then the last five treatments will be like a smaller area like ex where the tumor was and where the scar tissue is I think that's where they they try to hit with the targeted radiation so so yeah that's kind of what's going on with you know the surgical plan the radiation plan I, obviously things can change a little bit along the way Part of the reason why they don't want me to do any reconstruction yet is because that because I'm having such a large area being um, irradiated, they want to they want that area to be able to heal as much as possible, and they need to see if the skin will be pliable enough to be expanded in any kind of way. Sometimes people have trouble with that, which means that you know they won't necessarily be able to stretch the skin out to potentially have an implant. So I don't know yet what kind of reconstruction surgery I will have. If I will have it, I just really haven't decided that yet. So some of the options may include staying flat. It could mean getting some type of implant or it could mean having, 
there's other reconstructive procedures where they actually take fat and tissue and skin from your abdomen or from your legs and then use that to reconstruct breast tissue. And that may be something that I have to do. So we just really don't know yet until all that healing process is complete. And, and that's just gonna take time. So with that being said, it means that I won't be able to have any reconstruction till at least March, potentially April. And so that's going to mean that I'm gonna to have to make some adjustments next year if I'm going to do any flower farming. And I, I just don't know if that's gonna be possible even next year because of the you know, reconstructive surgery. And then I also, this is another thing that's come up. I did have genetic testing done and I do have a mutation um, to one of my BRCA. So the BRCA2 uh, gene has a deletion or some type of you know malfunction in it. And so that gives me a more higher percentage chance of uh, getting ovarian cancer. So I'm going to have a partial or full hysterectomy. I'm not sure which one yet, but that's also going to be coming sometime over the course of the next year. So there's still a lot that's gonna be done and my body still is gonna have a lot of healing and recuperating to do and I just don't know what the future holds and that's pretty scary for me because I don't, part of me just doesn't think it's gonna be possible to flower farm again, which is disappointing because I really enjoyed that but I can already tell like, and I know things will get better over time, but my body just isn't the same as it was before chemo. And I'm sure, you know, the other things that I'm doing to, to it through these treatments is going to cause, you know, some long-term effects. And so, you know, I'm just rethinking things and I don't know what that means for, for me and for my family and for the channel and for work. But right now, flower farming is gonna kind of be on the back burner. I want to continue my channel. I want to bring some other content. And I just don't know exactly what that's going to look like, guys. I really, I really don't know. It's still going to be, you know, homestead and lifestyle and some homemaking and probably just part of how I'm incorporating some self-care and things into my lifestyle. And that's been something that I've really taken a big focus on because that's really all that I've been able to do is just take care of myself. And I haven't had the energy or the strength to do a whole lot else. And so part of that is, is exercising, doing sauna, you know, facial care, eating right, just de-stressing less, less, um, what am I trying to say? I'm sorry, my brain still doesn't function quite right since chemo. I have a hard time gathering my thoughts. So I do say um a lot and I'm trying to remember the words that I'm trying to use and so I apologize for that. There's just a lot of things that, that have changed for me and I just don't know where we're headed and I'm just trying to take better care of myself while figuring out where my priorities lie in the future. And I'm trying not to make big choices or big decisions about my life until kind of all of this is over, but it's it's been such an emotional roller coaster. I know things are going to be different for me moving forward. Things just the things that used to feel super important don't feel important to me anymore. I don't know. <laughs> I know that sounds super weird and I can't describe it. It's really hard to explain if you've had cancer or you've had like a huge life-changing event like this, you'll you'll understand, you'll understand it a little more, I guess, but it's I feel like part of my personality has changed. I feel like I'm much calmer and much quieter at least right now because of all this. I'm just a little more reflective of things and more patient. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I guess I just need to probably wrap this video up in some kind of way. 
I don't know what else to share right now. It seems like every time I do a video for you guys, I'm sitting in this chair and I'm just talking away and I don't really know where everything is headed. My garden is looking amazing for the few things that I've been able to do. I'll get some shots and show you guys, you know, I have some flowers out there and they're, they're 10 feet tall and they're just everywhere. I have lots of zinnias growing and I have probably 50 okra plants that just volunteered and popped up out there in my garden all over. I have lots of just random volunteer flowers and vegetables. So I'm having a good time just tending to the few things that I have out there. And I'm just trying to take it easy for the most part and manage what I'm able to manage and not add in any extra stuff. And I feel like overall, that's the biggest thing that I've taken from this is that I was doing too much before. I was taking on too many roles, too many projects, too many things that I wasn't able to complete or feel good about because I couldn't ever do them to the best of my ability because I had to move on to the next thing that I was trying to do. And so that's, that's what I have to really evaluate going forward is what, what is the most important? What do I want to keep in my life and what things can fall by the wayside? And I just don't know what those are yet. So I, I really do want to keep the channel going. I want to keep bringing some kind of content. And I know right now this really isn't the content that you want to see. It's just me giving updates about how sick I am all the time. And, and that's not what I want to do either. So I'm trying to find the right content to bring you guys that's valuable to you, helpful to me, but still is brings the right balance to my life as well. So I'm trying to figure that out. I appreciate you guys sticking in with me while I figure it out. And, you know, I just appreciate everybody that's been along for the ride. So I'll kind of wrap things up. I will say this, uh, mark your calendars for September the 9th. I'm going to be in a Jemison, Alabama for an event at Petals from the Past, which is like a nursery garden center. Uh, there's going to be like a YouTuber meet and greet with lots of other um you know, YouTubers that you guys probably know. I will leave links to all of them down below, um, but I'm excited because I'm gonna get to see a lot of my friends. There's gonna be um, Hidden Oaks Homestead, uh, Cosmopolitan Cornbread, um, my wonderful friend Constance, um, Anna from Fermented Homestead will be there. I believe Cog Hill Farms will be there. <sighs> There's a bunch of other ones, guys, I'm trying to remember. Dusty Goat Homestead. Uh, Just Dig It Farms, Head Family Farm. Oh, I'm trying to remember them all off the top of my head. Uh, Sneed Farmhouse Sanctuary, I believe is another one. Oh my gosh, I hope I don't forget them all, guys. I will leave them listed down below, but it's a free event as far as I know. You can just come out, um, meet all of these um, wonderful YouTubers. If there are any of, of those that you enjoy seeing or watching, um, they will be there to meet up. Um, I think we'll be there for most of the day. The event starts around nine in the morning. I'll keep you posted on the end time, but if that's something you're interested in, come out, come get to hang out with everybody for a little while for the day. Um, and there's lots of flowers and things I think that are gonna be available, available for purchase. So it's gonna be a really, really nice event. And I can't wait for that. Um, and yeah, hope you guys can come. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I appreciate everybody um, that you sat through this video and you watched it for this long. And um, I hope you'll return and I'm gonna start coming with a little bit more content as soon as I'm able to. So thank you guys so much and I love y'all and I'll see you soon, bye.